Oh, I love being fan before the show. A little faster. Oh la la, it's me, Cisco Morse. Here's what's coming out of Garden with Cisco. Construct a container that's perfect for a sunny spot. Tricks to keep your lettuce growing longer. A simple recipe to get the most out of cherries, peaches, and plums. And do some garden chemistry to turn your pink hydrangeas blue. All this and more is coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. Today we are at the Carl S. English Junior Botanical Gardens at the Hiram M. Chittenden Locks here in Ballard. I couldn't catch that. Could you say that again? <laughs> hey, we're at the Ballard Locks at the garden. <laughs> that sounds better for sure. <laughs> Back in 1917, when the locks were built, the land around them was flat and featureless. Over the span of about 40 years, Carl S. English Jr. transformed these seven acres into what you see here today. Now there are more than 570 plant species here. I love to cruise around and kind of get some inspiration. But before you run right out here to the locks, take a look at this container. You might just draw some inspiration from it. Pot, you got to start off with a little yeah, fertilizer, some huh? Good organic fertilizer in there. And we want this baby to keep going all That's summer. That's right, you know. And this this will hold it six weeks, and then we'll have to prep put a little bit more in it. So again, dig yeah. that in. And I love this hibiscus that you got. But what? Oh, la, la. You're gonna plant that outside? Yeah, because this is the trick. You know, when we do a shade pot, a lot of right. times I go to the house plant section. Oh. So this baby, no way that's going to be hardy in a million years. Right. But it loves sun. Look at those tropical flowers How on there. Fun. This will make the coolest centerpiece. And then if I'm lucky, I might be able to talk Mary to let me put it in the, in the house, house for the winter. <laughs> yeah, see if you can get it to bloom again next year. Yeah. So that is no doubt the centerpiece, right? Yeah. Okay. And you know, Amiga, one of the reasons I wanted to do a pot, I don't yeah. have enough in my driveway. Yeah. Already, you right. <laughs> you don't call it a driveway. Yours is a pot way. <laughs> Boy, that's a found in, I'll tell you what. Oh, and your man. wife puts up with you. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> <laughs> so you have that, and then you also have the Wilma, which is one of my favorites. Oh, and lemon yeah. cypress. This baby is so good. I know why oh, you like it. Smells it like smells lemon. like lemon pledge. Yes, it does. Uh, I love so it. So I put this a little to the side so, so that, that we, we can got put room Wilma. for that guy. Okay. So now we've got a couple interesting textures in there. So what are these babies here? These are lantana. Lantana, and they bloom nice. All summer, and they kind of creep over, right? Yeah, they creep over. So that'll be really, really cool. You okay. know. Okay. I meant to buy five. I got home. I had four. Four. Oh, that's oh. hilarious. Because so you like odd to, numbers, right? Yeah. So we're gonna Plant have to try odd and fudge that, you know. And the little grass guys Ooh, here. These are really cool. They're called Liberdia. They like the darker colors more, but what I've found about hummingbirds, they find uh -huh. what they like. Right. Know, so they'll find it. I know that. So you know what? Well, you have three of those. We could just do alternate and then put. We yeah, could just skip maybe one. one more. Yeah, just do the grass over here. The, yeah. And then, then we are okay. good. All right. And then oh, we have perfect. an even number of each because it'll fit right there. This How is just cute. Un, un Unusual for you and me not to have to cram I know, every plant in but there. These, this way they'll have room to breathe. That's true, you know. That's Add unusual for soil. you and me. So. so when you're doing a summer pot, I'm thinking watering it is the most important thing. Boy, Besides putting so it in the sun, important. not letting it dry out too much. Because exactly. they, oh, they get so sad when you do. They do, you know, and that, I think that's the real key. And deadheading, so, you know, as you can see, Megan, this flower on this hibiscus is getting a little old. Right. So, so we got to go back to there. And keep them looking nice. Yeah. Um, and then you can just, I mean, it's really, you can replant Wilma. And other than that, Wilma, yeah, which yeah, is the lemon cypress. And these Liberdias are hardy if you give them really good drainage. They okay. like pots better than the ground. Right, but. right. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Ballard Locks today. You know how they say, let's talk turkey? 
Well, I'm with Cisco. We're talking lettuce. Oh. Even in summertime. <laughs> well, you know, lettuce is a cool season crop. Right? You know, once it starts to warm up, it bolts, goes to seed. Tastes horrible after that. But our friends over at Hendrikus Organics, they've got some ideas on how to grow that lettuce even late into the season, plus some tips on how to keep it fresh once you've harvested it. Ever consider having a lettuce tasting? Mmm. Mmm. This is really different. Mmm. It almost has a little bit of muskiness. Okay, that may cross over into garden geekdom, but there is a homegrown lettuce variety for every taste. Mmm. Mmm. No garden is complete without growing lettuce. Partly because it's so easy to grow, it's a, a short growing crop. You can have varieties that'll, uh, you can harvest in as little as 40 days. Plus, people love salad. Salad is really good for you. And coming, especially coming right out of the garden, it's so fresh, it's so crisp, and it is so tasty. Nirav extends the growing season by keeping plants cool in hoop houses. Well, one of the reasons that I say lettuce is easy is because of the disease resistance. There are very few things that plague it. Non-toxic bait keeps slugs at bay, and careful watering takes care of other potential problems. If you keep the soil evenly moist, you're not really going to have a problem. The only other thing it really gets plagued with is what they call lettuce rot, and it's usually from overwatered soil, too moist conditions so that you've got fungal conditions, and your bottom leaves touching the soil will start to get, they'll start to rot at the core, and it'll go through the whole plant. Growing greens like mustard, kale, and chard will supplement salads with both taste and nutrition. And here are two tips that will keep all leafy greens fresh after harvest. One, keep it in a glass bowl. Don't use plastic. Glass helps it stay fresher. There's something in the plastic that makes it go bad quicker. Also, don't use a metal knife. I found that out. I buy these plastic serrated knives you can get. They're pretty easy to find. And I shred the lettuce with those if I'm not going to do it by hand. Lettuce has been with us for a long time. There are uh, writings on the, uh, the Egyptian tombs that predate 4500 BC that talk about lettuce. Joker lettuce. So why not raise a leaf to salute this garden green? Cheers. Toast, cheers. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Another great way to make sure you have good lettuce in the warm season is to buy varieties that you can grow late, like the one that's perfectly suited for me. Drunken woman frizzy-headed butterhead. What? You gotta be making that up. <laughs> Drunken woman frizzy-headed butterhead. Oh. I, I will not take offense that our producer bought this for me. <laughs> I'm Although, gonna try growing that. You know what? Chardonnay and Caesar salad does work pretty well. Oh, la, la. Okay, let's go to other <laughs> garden insanity. Just because a plant dies growing in a certain spot doesn't mean you have to give up. No. I cannot believe Cisco has dead plants in his garden. Oh, la, I am la. getting rid of them, Mr. Well, you know, Cisco. I thought this can would come back. Uh, but it's not. And you know what we're going to have to do when huh. you finally get that yeah, dug yeah, out, yeah. Megan? What's that? <laughs> we want to knock all the dirt off that because we're going to put something else really cool in this uh, spot. I can't wait to see since this one didn't seem to do so well there. No, you know, it, it just didn't come back and I thought for sure it would, you know. So now, when, any time I plant a tropical plant, which this is oh, going to be, nice. then I always go heavy on the fruit. Okay. I don't want to wait all summer for the effects. I want tropical plants to get big and showy. Nice. I think you got it there. Okay. All right, here it comes. Double your Wow, closure. that is a lot. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, I'm not fooling around okay. with this guy, you know. So okay. what do you have for us? Check this out, Megan. Another canna? Yeah, canna. And this wow. one's Tropicana Gold. That is Height gorgeous. Four to six feet. So let's go with this tree here. I thought you wanted a lot of sun. Is it going to get enough sun? It might be why the last one didn't come back. But really? I might even trim the tree just a little bit. I get pretty good sun in there. He says as he tries it <laughs> once again. <laughs> yes, if at first you don't succeed, spend, spend again. <laughs> don't you know the definition of insanity, though? <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. I digress. Uh -oh. Okay, it's a miracle I'm getting this out of here, Megan. 
Oh, here we go. Oh, good. Hey, I don't need to hardly break these up. Okay, Megan. good. They're really good. So go ahead. And he already has a blue flower on it. Yeah. Is that because of greenhouse? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Mine don't have, aren't that far up. Is yeah, that but down you too did low? better than me. Yeah, that's a little low. I'll pick okay. it up if you want okay. to throw some of that soil in there. Okay. There, I think that might be it. What do you think? Oh, Is that la, good? La. Yeah. Okay. Make All sure right. he's straight and put him yeah. in there. So water him really well for yeah. the first season at least. Yep. And probably this will probably be the only season. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there something you can do to protect his roots yeah, and you know, insulate I, it a little bit in I the winter? Didn't, I didn't put fern fronds over it okay. in the fall like I should have. So if I'd have done that, I think this would have come back. Because what a gorgeous spot for him oh, with your little alliums. Yeah, allium Christophe eye yeah. with this. Oh my gosh, the combination. And this needed, look at all this fine foliage everywhere. This needs something bold, you know. And but does anybody else think this is crazy? He just had one in this spot die. And yet he's putting another one right back. I don't know. in my great confidence, I'm sure I can keep this guy alive. We'll check back with you next year, my friend. I'll keep you alive, buddy. Don't worry. And I'm happy to report that Canna made it through the winter. That's because it never froze last year. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Botanical Gardens at the Ballard Lots. Okay, Megan, yep. what's your favorite stone fruit? Oh, I love me a good nectarine. And as soon as I think it's my favorite, the peach comes around. Wait, you only get one. Okay, you get more than one because Lynn Via showed me a dish that uses every kind of stone fruit. It's the perfect summer dessert. Well, Lynn, I see a lot of fruit, but I'm stumped. I can't figure out what we're doing here. So simple. A little baked fruit with honey and fresh thyme. Ooh, that sounds yeah, good. And then we're going to serve it with um, baklava and cardamom ice cream. Would you pinch me? <laughs> I think I'm dreaming. Oh, okay. my gosh. So fun. All oh, right. yeah. Okay, so let's make our little glaze for our fruit. So I'm going to give you a little honey here. All this right. is wildflower honey. Oh, and you can decide how much honey you want to add based on how ripe your fruits are. So if they're super sweet and ripe, you don't need a ton. So taste them a little. Taste them, yeah. You're going to have to taste them. How terrible. <laughs> All right, and then a little splash of lemon juice, because I like to balance sweet and tart to bring out that, you know, in the fruit itself. And then here's some fresh thyme. Fresh thyme. With a now, few little blossoms. Why did you pick fresh thyme to put in there? You know, the thyme and honey taste very similar to me. So I think they match together really well. So oh, go ahead and stir all that All right, up. cool, yeah. great. So you're just gonna kind of blend that all together and then we're gonna dump our fruits in there. Beautiful. Okay. Yep, okay. So see, it's already pretty. It looks like summer already. So now, let's add cherries. Local, of course, local cherries. Oh yeah, they're just coming in, huh? Yeah, gorgeous plums. Mm. Nectarines. Oh, look at all this good stuff. And you can see what I've done is I've just pitted them and just sort of cut them, kept them in pretty large chunks, yeah. right? Apricots. And then, just because it's pretty, I put some lemon slices in there as well. Oh, wow. And, uh, oh, it just, is pretty. Isn't this fun? Just toss that up, all those beautiful little chop. Now, if you've got, um, other little blossoms in your garden like lavender blossoms you know oh. or you know little edible blooming uh, herbs you can toss those in here as well oh fine and any other stone fruit that you love and maybe you know throw in a few at the very last minute throw in a few blackberries or whatever oh okay yeah yep all right so that just goes into a baking pan like that and into about a 425 oven and we'll we'll check them in probably about 20 minutes or so oh, oh god See, now this is summer. Isn't oh, it yes. gorgeous? Oh my gosh. All right, so let me get you a little bit of all the different kinds of fruits here. Oh yeah, 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 and yeah. And lots of yummy juice. That's oh, another yeah. thing I love about this. And you know, one thing you can do, Cisco, is you can, t can take all these juices and reduce them down a little bit and even make a little bit of syrup. So oh, whatever you want to wow. do there. Okay, so. so I think maybe I might have to join you too. Oh, okay, my yeah. darling, let's eat. eat. Oh, mama mia. Oh. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I'm not sleeping. You don't have to pinch me. I know I'm awake. Oh, is this good? Mm. This is yeah. like a bite of paradise. Yeah, it is. 
So, you know, Cisco, I've heard that some of the plants here were grown from seeds that were brought through the locks from all over the world. Well, check out this tree. It's a Dawn Redwood. Ooh, they were beautiful. thought to be extinct until they were rediscovered in China in the 1940s. Yeah. They have eight of them here. They're from seeds. The very first ones that were it's sent back so to the United cool. States. Oh, la la. Mm. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the park here at the Ballard Locks. Now, believe it or not, I have lost my buddy Cisco. You see, he saw this human-sized cat and decided to chase it. I'm not sure what he's up to. We're going to find out in just a minute. That's Cisco, you know. In the meantime, here is a hydrangea that one of my all-time favorites would love, Van Morrison. Let's dance moonlight hydrangea. How about that? Now, they say it'll be pink in an alkaline soil and in a more acidic soil blue. I think I have a combination soil with this guy. I think you do. And you know, all hydrangeas kind of go through a little evolution as the right. season goes along. But if we give it the right substance, then we can turn it, make it go from pink to blue uh, instead of the opposite way. Because I like the blue. You yeah, know, I, yeah like the blue. I know. You the other love thing, blue. this is small, two to three feet wide and tall. Oh, that's cool. And you can prune it however you want it. It blooms on last year's and this year's growth. Oh, that's, Brand new in the nurseries. That is so cool. So Just Dance, this is called. Let's mm. Dance Moonlight. I feel like we need a little Van Morrison. <laughs> with this guy. Yeah, yeah. So let's get this baby in the ground. And then okay, we'll, tell folks, yeah, <laughs> we'll tell folks how to change that soil color. Yeah, yeah, because that's really important. And a lot of people want to do that, you know, so, and most hydrangeas it'll work with. Not all of them, by the fertilizer. way. Fertilizer. Do we need fertilizer? Yeah. And we're going to do a trick here, Megan. Okay. We're going to use rhododendron, organic rhododendron food. For acid-loving plants. For acid-loving plants. It'll give, us, it'll give us a little head start at getting these blue. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Throw her in there. I'll mix it in. All righty. There okay. we go. I think that's good. Okay. Now, grab the plant. Oh, she's All looking right. good. That's a little low. Okay. There we go. So can we get rid of these? Yeah, yeah. Let's they're a little the, ratty looking anyway. They're over the hill Here, anyway. So you. you know what those were, Megan? Those what? were the spring flowers. Oh, okay. See? So that's what you get with one like this. Interesting. You get, you get spring and fall. Do we have a good, can you look and see, do we have a good side, a bad side, or are we okay? Um, you know what? I'd shift it a little bit around here. Yeah, that way. Okay. Yeah. There, I Very think generous. that looks good. I'm going to bury a flower in here. Oh, all right. Okay. Great. Okay, so now you have a special way of increasing the acidity in the soil. Yeah, aluminum sulfate is oh, the thing we need here, that. Megan. Yeah, so, all right, now we need a third of a cup here in a gallon of water. So we're going to water it in, so you don't want to mix water this it into in. the soil. I find that's the easiest way to uh, do it. Okay. So great, all right. You only get blue flowers if your hydrangea can pick up aluminum. Wow. And there is aluminum in the soil, but they can't pick it up if the soil's alkaline. It's kind of a, you know, a chemical thing. Right. So by adding aluminum sulfate, not only are we uh, adding the aluminum, uh -huh. we're making it more acid as well. And we're watering at the same yeah, time. Yeah, how about I like that? that. Huh? So, <laughs> I could kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, but now, here's the bad news, though, Megan. Oh. This doesn't, here, do I get the back yeah. here? This doesn't, one time doesn't do it. Oh, okay. So, How often do I need to do uh, this? Usually once a month. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. And you could start next February next year, and it's an every oh. year thing. Yeah. You know, it'll, but it'll turn it's bluer and bluer. It's a needy little guy. Yeah. And you don't want to overdo it, though. So never more than once a month. And I'd only do it about five times in a year at the okay. most. But, well, I think wow. Let's Dance is going to be ready for a summer party. What do you think? <laughs> I think so, too. What? A, it's an absolutely beautiful hydrangea. Me and Van Morrison will be out here under the moonlight. <laughs> okay. I'm out already. Right. What is that noise, Cisco? What have you done? You chased a cat up a tree. <laughs> yeah, Megan, I just chased Pussycat up the tree. Hi, Pussycat. Yeah, she's okay. going to start in a big garden adventure here on August 3rd and 4th. It's all free. Sounds really exciting. It's very exciting. We start in one place and then travel through the whole park. Wow. So the owl and the pussycat? 
Oh, too fun. What do you want to do now that we're up in the tree? Well, how about we write a love poem? Ooh, a, love a haiku love. about the park. Okay, I'm ready. I love this big park. I love Brussels sprouts too. Both of them are green. Oh, la yeah. la! What a okay. wonderful poem! Oh, lovely. I think I'm going to let you guys work on your haiku as good as it was and find out a way to get out of the tree. Get me a ladder, No quick. kidding. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. If you are interested in coming out and experiencing <laughs> this adventure in the park, the adventure of Owl and Pussycat, we'll put a link at king5.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend.